really excited each year about the hybrid selection and variety selection that goes into our fields. I, I'm excited about the differences from one variety to the next, one hybrid to the next, but today we want to focus on the other part of that decision, the trait decision. Which trait are we going to use and, and which ones are new that are coming out? Now in corn, there are some new traits that are coming along. In soybeans, there are some exciting traits as well. So let's start with corn. The Nutricepta trait where we've got VT Double Pro stacked with Viptera is one that you may consider depending on where you're at in the country. All right, so explain that just a little bit. What is the farmer gaining as opposed to the VT Double Pro that was tremendously popular last year in the United States? Well, Double Pro is above ground protection. So we're talking about no rootworm protection, just protection against things like corn borers, for example. But we've got multiple traits in there to try to get good protection on a wide variety of insects. What adding that Viptera trait does, though, is it gives us another mode of action against earworm, western bean cutworm, uh, some of the tough insects, especially those that attack the ear. And Tricept has been uh, one that's widely accepted in the south uh, and in areas where these worms that attack the ear are prevalent. Now we haven't seen hybrid selection yet or hybrid choices for farmers way up into the early maturities in the upper Midwest. So you have to talk to your seed dealer and see exactly how early he'll have hybrids this year in the Tricepta trait. Outside of that in corn, really haven't seen a lot of change in terms of the trait offerings. So Tricepta really is the, the new trait that's on the block, but you still have the decision to make about several of the traits that have been out for a while, including smart stacks. A few years ago, there were a lot of people using VT triple or smart stack, something where you had good rootworm protection. And for a little while, Monsanto was talking about, well, we'd like everybody to go to the full trait package. We'll price it appropriately in different areas of the country, but they didn't do that. Basically, smart stacks got too high priced and compared to VT double, there wasn't enough value there. So a lot of people went to the VT double and went away from the rootworm protection. Now, I would caution you to say, uh, I don't have rootworms or I don't have many rootworms, so I don't need that kind of protection. Look, there are probably going to be rootworms out in your field. I get that there might not be a lot and you might say, well, I really don't know how much I have because I'd have to dig plants up and it's hard to tell. It's kind of hidden yield loss is the way I look at it. But one way or the other, you're probably going to, in many cases, have to do something for rootworm, whether you want to use a liquid product at planting, a dry product at planting, or a trait like SmartStack. So I would just encourage you, going into this next year, at least be considering that and at least try some on some of your acres. So in other words, if nothing else, I'd probably say at least one or two percent of my acres, I would use some smart stacks. At least one or two percent of my acres, I would at least use some insecticide. So then I know for comparative purposes on my own farm, does this pay or does it not? All right, let's turn to soybeans now because there are some traits that are either just getting approved or we're hopeful for approval by spring. Uh, the one we're hopeful about is in list. We, we've been talking about this now for a number of years. There's a new 2,4-D, 2,4-D choline that doesn't have the volatility like the old amines and esters. It's an excellent weed control product and the Enlist trade has got tolerance to this 2,4-D but also to Roundup and to Liberty. That's exciting. There's three different products that you could potentially use on there that this crop would be tolerant to. We've seen Enlist in other crops like cotton already. It's worked very well. The herbicide performance has been good. So we're excited for that to come in soybeans. We'll see if they get approval. Uh, many times uh, with things like this, it's just up to the regulators. All the data has been submitted. From what I understand, Corteva has no more data requests they're getting from other countries. Primarily China right now is the one that we're waiting on. There is a new trait though that did get approved. That's the Liberty Link GT27 where you can spray Roundup or Liberty. So now we've got Roundup Ready Beans, Liberty Link soybeans, dicamba tolerant soybeans that are tolerant to dicamba and Roundup, and these new soybeans that are tolerant to Liberty and Roundup. Well, here's the one that I'm excited for down the road. It's the stack of dicamba 
together with Liberty. So if I could have Roundup, Dicamba, and Liberty all in the same bean, that'd be fantastic. It's kind of like the Enlist deal where I have Roundup and Liberty, but there's 2,4-D tolerance. So either way, the point is I'd like to spray that Dicamba or 2,4-D early in the season as a burn down and for my first pass, and then my late pass could be Liberty. You see, Liberty is actually labeled later in the season than Dicamba is today. Dicamba is only to R1, and in some states it's much earlier than that. But Liberty is labeled to R2, so I could spray a little bit later. I've got a different mode of action. I got a product there that I don't really have to worry about drift. I definitely don't have to worry about volatility. So to me, that makes a nice mix. That's kind of what I'm looking forward to in the future. Well, when you think about these beans tolerant to Liberty and Roundup, what does that add to the mix? Well, if you've got straight Liberty Link soybeans, you are concerned that a neighbor may drift some Roundup into you, so you do have some protection that way. But I look at it as this. You're probably not all Liberty Link crops. You probably have some Roundup Ready crops as well, so you've got a tank contamination possibility when your crop is not tolerant to both. So that does add that piece to the puzzle. Uh, with volunteer corn control, you may say, well, I had Liberty Link corn last year. I had Roundup Ready corn. Uh, yeah, maybe that would allow you another choice on controlling them, but so much of the corn today is stacked with Liberty and Roundup. I don't think this trade actually really gives you much on that. But in terms of weed control, you could potentially tank mix Liberty and Roundup together. That may give you a little more kick on certain weeds. Our recommendation is make sure that you have the right traits to control the insects and the weeds that you need to on your farm, but then obviously you want to pick the highest yielding products for your situation. Well, seed selection is really exciting, probably even more exciting than weed control, but we will talk about controlling our Weed of the Week later in the show.